Gone are the days where South Asian parents forced their children to be doctors, lawyers and engineers but are now actually encouraging them to take part in sport. I'm here at Five Ways Transformation Gym in Birmingham. What's up Stephen? Where I am going to be talking to an incredible athlete. She's not only the reigning Commonwealth champion for powerlifting, but actually also the first British Sikh female to represent Great Britain. So come along and let's go ahead and tell her story. Let's meet Karanjeet Kaur Baines. to meet you how are you doing i'm amazing how are you doing i'm good i'm good are you ready to show off your gains always always <laughs> lovely now wow you're such an inspiration i want to know where it started where did it begin take us back to mem take us back down memory lane let us know how did it start for you so i'm lucky to have been born into a really sporty family the baines family so i've always been surrounded by sport so if you know the film Dungle, my, yeah. my father is actually my coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, so it relates to that go. story. So he's a former bodybuilder and powerlifter himself and he's coached me since I was a young girl. So I started off my sporting journey in athletics when mm. I, I was a sprinter, 300 meters, I was three times Warwickshire champion, wow. hammer throwing champion. But like when I was younger, I grew up and I watched my, I've got twin older brothers okay. and they were 400 meter hurdlers at national level. Wow. So I'd watch them like flying around the track and I was like, yeah, I want to be like that. These guys are amazing. That can be you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I really looked up to them. My dad's like, yeah, you can do it. He always encouraged me. And, you know, he's always been a huge advocate for getting women into sport. He even got my mom into sport. Nice. Like, uh, even as like a master's in like her 40s, she won like five goals and four silvers in wow. track and field. Like, hammer throwing, javelin, Everything. discus, like proper gladiator, like really incredible. So, yeah. At 17, I actually transitioned into powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Initially, I just got into the gym to like keep fit. You know how you know how it is with us yeah, girls. Yeah. Want to get toned? I thought yeah. let's let's keep fit. And then my dad taught me like the squat, deadlift, and the bench press, and I loved it. I picked it up quite naturally. But I think he's always had his eye on me because when I was a young girl, he used to like get me to carry the milk cartons in when oh. I was like three years old helping. He's like, oh, this girl's got some strength. Three years like, old. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Was <laughs> I think he had his eye on me, but like I loved it. Um, then after three months of having never picked up a weight, I entered my first competition. Wow. Well, he entered me. I was still in my, my PE kit, sixth form student. <laughs> I didn't even have any special kit. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I won. And I just loved that feeling. But I think more empowering was when I walked into the competition venue and the referees came up to us and I was st stood next to my brothers and they automatically assumed my brothers were like no competing. They completely overlooked me. So I think ever since then I was like, I've got to do it, like show female power. Like, like you're here for it all. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I never looked back from that moment when I was 17. Nice. So from 17 years old and now you're 25. Yep. So the journey has just begun. Like you're there, you're at your peak. You are the Commonwealth reigning champion for powerlifting. How was that? Absolutely incredible. Like that was my first international title. Um, so I did that in tw uh, 2019 cool. and it was in uh, Newfoundland in Canada. So one of the perks is that you get to travel around. Nice. And yeah, I remember I'd overcome so many obstacles to get to that point. Like I had an injury that took okay. me out for like, two years and you know it was a chance for me to kind of come back show what I could do and I won three gold medals there um, so that was in the squat the deadlift and the overall and two silver medals in the bench press and Amazing. the bench press only so yeah just having I remember standing on that podium and having those medals around my neck and almost like I had tears in my eyes like I could see my parents looking so proud because I was able to you know do all that hard work and sacrifice justice and like I always hope that my example can be a role model. Like I even think of my younger self, like yeah. to her, like from the PE kid. Yeah, yeah. From, <laughs> from I always say like a schoolgirl with a dream to like the international stage. Like it's possible. Like I came from humble roots, nothing fancy. Like I sheer hard work and determination. Amazing. <laughs> but you're not just the Commonwealth champion. You are the first Sikh British female to you know represent Great Britain. How does that feel? Huge honour, like I'm really proud of my heritage and my culture and I always like to represent my identity as like, you know, a Sikh female. But not only that, just to like 
represent diverse and minority backgrounds, you know, yeah. up there competing with the best of the best. Because like Great Britain's amazing. We're such a multicultural society. We have so many different um, individuals from all walks of life. And the fact that I can be Great Britain representing, you know, our people, our community. But I always think, OK, if I'm the first, then I hope my example can be like for the next generation of especially girls to get yeah, into strengths. Definitely. Like I hope to leave a legacy that, OK, I, you know, because of her, I got encouraged to get into it. And any way that I could help, it would be my, my pleasure. Uh, how do you feel being the very few Punjabi or Sikh athletes out there? Like, what does that mean to you? It's an incredible feeling. I think sometimes, you know, when I found out I was the first British Sikh, I was surprised because I thought, you know, how come there hasn't been one before? But I think, you know, I'm blessed to have been in a family that gave me equal opportunities. You know, sometimes traditional mindsets are like, you know, boys do certain things, yeah. girls don't have equal. And like, my parents stamped that out, that I never was the case in our family and my hope is like every child gets that opportunity because you know whatever your dreams your passions are like I'm honored to be um, up there amongst you know often it's all males that you see but Definitely. I'm like one of the you know only. Fe yeah only females and it, it's a huge honor but I'm hoping that I can be a great example to many more yeah that's that's my dream like I think I'm always about helping the next generation how can I help and um, yeah, sometimes it just takes the first person to do it. You've got to break those barriers, break those glass ceilings, and then, yeah, sky's the limit. There you go. Now, you know, you said you want other people to kind of look up to you so that there can be generations full of, you know, athletes. Yeah. But who did you look up to? Because, you know, we've said you're, you're one of the only females out there. Um, who did you look up to and... Do yeah, things? I think for me, I got my inspiration from home, from my family, you know, as I mentioned, my dad like former bodybuilder, powerlifter, like, you know, seriously powerful man. Like we've got like a Baines family wall of fame at home. We've got nice. all our like kind of pictures from like his bodybuilding, my brother's like hurdling, even my sprinting days. Like yeah. the most medals on the wall is actually my mom, which is so awesome for me to say, like all of her medals, she's probably got the most haul. Um, but yeah, I think I got my inspiration from home. My father, you know, he showed that, you know, with, he was a natural athlete because back then in bodybuilding, sometimes people would take drugs and stuff, but mm. he's completely natural, hardworking family man, you know, and he definitely is like a superhero to me. But also, you know, my mom, like she showed when she was younger in Punjab, like her older brother's a champion wrestler. She grew up seeing him have all opportunities and she always thought one day, I love sport. I want to get the chance to do this. And yeah. the fact that, you know, when she married my dad, she got to like, live some of her childhood kind of dreams, maybe even through me and, I, and my brothers as well. But yeah, it just makes me so proud that she never gave up, even like as a mum. Like there's an article of her like super mum manjits. Like, wow. like, like, we need to check that out. Yes, you do, definitely. So I think it's just, it's just amazing that, you know, there really is no age, no limit. Like no one can ever tell you you can't achieve anything. Like powerlifting is such an incredible sport that you see younger people, but you see all the way to like old age, like who says you can't like, for the, all the aunties out there, they're not getting to the gym, I'm going <laughs> to introduce you to my mum. There you go. Yeah. And there's, you know, quite a lot of stigma as well, like sometimes coming, moving from India to mm. the UK, people give up on their dreams, yeah. you know, mm. but it's great that your parents are still fighting through and trying to get what they deserve. Definitely. I think... Sometimes, you know, in the Indian community, even like, you know, with girls getting married, I often find that, you know, once they settle down, their dreams are kind of gone. And I want to break that stigma. Like, you keep smashing it. You can do it. Like, you've got to find the right kind of partner or, you know, surroundings that you can still push for your dreams. Because gone are the days where, you know, your, mar your dreams end with getting married. And yeah. it's like having children time. No, I think those days are gone. Like, it's just my parents are an example to never give up. Like, obviously, you go through the family roles, but that you know you got to keep pushing you got to keep striving never give up i think that's something you know in the punjabi hard work ethic that yeah, we were taught yeah, yeah. you know ever since that we came over to this country it's never really left us you know amazing amazing <laughs> now you are part of so many campaigns and you do so many other like extracurricular work and projects tell us a little bit about some things you've been involved in yeah so i love like any way that i can help all the way from like children you know to the younger generation like athletes so i'm involved in like I'm the UK and global ambassador for the seat games to get more people and also the powerlifting coach for that to get more young athletes from our kind of background into kind of um, sports. So keep tuned for that. And Definitely. then um, I'm also um, working with a company called I'm 1313, being a narrator for a Sikh children's book wow. as well. So really cool. Um, I've been part of the Malala Fund Game Changers campaign. They pick 
girls that are smashing it in education because I'm also like a chartered accountant. <laughs> are same, you actually? Yeah, at the same time. No, as wait, well. what, what, is, what do you not do? Please tell us, what do you not do? Yeah, yeah, well, my sport's not funded, so I have to find a way to kind of, you know, obviously pay the bills and you yeah. know parents like you got to tick the education box you've and do it off. <laughs> you've ticked it off you've ticked it off got the ACA got the degree <laughs> and everything but I'm always advocating that you know sports and education can go hand in hand because I know we're always drilled the message that got to do your education can't do anything else but yeah. why can't you be a well-rounded individual and like you know speaking of education I'm also due to I wrote a chapter in Malala's book that's no coming out way. next year so that's really exciting so I'll keep you tuned about that one too. Nice. <laughs> Lots of exciting stuff from you. Yeah. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you today. I think it's time that you know we get our sweat on and we Definitely. touch some weight you know. Can't yeah. wait let's go. <laughs> I love it let's go. Okay come on let's go.